Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am in a new location right now. My family and I are actually camping, so I'm in my camper. Um, the lighting's probably gonna go in and out because I'm just sitting by a window and you'll probably hear people drive by on their golf carts and kids on their bikes and things. But my family and I just needed a change of scenery and by staying in our camper, we're still able to be socially distant from everyone. So uh, my husband and my kids are fishing at a pond right now. So I thought I would take this opportunity to talk about this traveler's notebook. Um, I actually made this and I finished it last night. So the inside, I'm going to take everything out of here because that is not completely done yet. I still have to make some things for that but this is what i'm using as my financial tracker slash planner so i really wanted to customize this for my needs and obviously i chose the water buffalo leather i just i have a ton of it so i wanted to make as many things as possible from it so first things first this is technically travelers like standard travelers notebook size um in width but in height it's a lot taller so this is my sojourner this is what i'm currently using as my journal um and th this is standard travelers notebook size and you can see how much taller it is and i don't have my ruler with me but the dimensions of this are 11 and a half inches uh, from left to right when open flat and nine and three quarter inches tall. And I think this is usually around nine inches tall. So I wanted to make it really, really tall because I wanted it to fit letter size paper that's been folded in thirds, how bills and things like that usually come in the mail. And I wanted it to fit in here without it sticking out on the edges at all. So that's why I did that. Uh, you could see that I have two elastics on here and that is because it is so tall. If I had just one elastic in the middle, it wouldn't really contain these edges very well, like the top and the bottom. And then if I did my particularly favorite vertical elastic, um, it would have just caused too much like bowing out like this in the middle, um, just cause it's too tall. So I decided to go for double horizontal closure elastics. And I love, I love the way this looks. It, I think it's so unique. It's so charming. I think I have seen this before from some other makers do a double elastic like this but for this particular cover it just happens to be really functional because distributing the closure on two different points just helps keep this closed more uniformly so let's admire <laughs> the water buffalo leather i picked this piece because it had such great like puckering and bubbling texture on it like oh my gosh I just I love it <laughs> and the stitching oh my gosh the stitching this was probably the worst project <laughs> I've ever completed to date as far as how much it butchered my hands it was insane and this is like three layers thick this one is two um, let me get everything out of here so we can open it up because there's a special surprise inside. Okay, so everything is out of it and we'll open it up. So I usually just pull one off the bottom, pull this one off the top and oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. I originally was going to make all of the pockets scalloped, but after I scalloped this one I thought you know what it's just gonna be a focal point um, <laughs> and the rest were gonna be straight because that was so hard to do um, and it required practicing on a scrap piece of leather so technically I've done this like twice and I was just over it and I really need to figure out how to sharpen my tools 
the right way because I'm working with a lot of blunted objects and that makes it way, way harder. So you can see the double closure elastic right there. This just has three strings. Uh, so full length pocket, full length pocket back here. And then these are card pockets. But obviously because this is so tall, these are pretty roomy uh, for like a standard credit card. Uh, let me see if I can find something. Okay, so here's a Build-A-Bear card. This is just a standard credit card size and you can see how that fits. There's obviously room everywhere, but these are pretty tight pockets. So the cards that I'm putting in here aren't falling out at all. And this is just for credit cards and store cards and things that we no longer use, but I just still happen to have the cards. So I keep them in here as just like a holding area, I suppose. So what I plan on doing, and I'll explain how I'm using this as a finance TN once I get all the inside folders and things sorted out, but this was actually a composition size um, notebook from Foxy Fix, just an insert because I used to have a composition size TN, um, but I never got rid of these. So what I ended up doing was just uh, cutting it down a little off the top and the bottom and then this edge and it actually fits perfectly for the dimensions in here. So, you know, I got to custom make this perfectly. I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. And I think I have like six or seven of these composition notebooks, so I'll be able to uh, keep this going for, for a little while. So it was really interesting making this and stitching it all together because this is the first time I've ever had to do like three layers. So this outer layer here, this is the traditional like eight to 10 ounce weight that this water buffalo leather comes in. And I got it from Springfield Leather and everything will be linked in the description as well. And then the all of the inside pieces, these are all four to five ounce in weight. And I got them from uh, Waterhouse Leather because they actually offer the same water buffalo leather, but in three different weights. And then they also have an option where you can pay to have them uh, split it down even further. So like if you wanted like a one ounce or something like that. So I chose, you know, thinner pieces for the inside, obviously, but it still ended up making it so thick. Like, look at that. And a little tip that I had picked up that I just kind of decided to go ahead and try was instead of punching through three layers of really thick leather, I put these two layers together and punched it and then punch the outer layer separately. And then I glued them together and then sewed through them. Because the thing is, if, and this has happened to me, but if I'm punching through here, through all of these layers, I don't always hold my uh, stitching chisels perpendicular. And if it's like tilted, even the littlest bit, when it comes through this side, it's going to make the stitch holes misalign. It just helps prevent error when you're punching through thinner pieces. So I tried that out. Um, I don't, it, it was a ton of extra work and I don't know that it made things easier, but I don't know any other way that I could have gone about this. And I do think my stitching ended up pretty good given how hard it was to punch all these holes in. So I used um, the Ritza Tiger Thread in a Havana Cigar, and this was actually the one millimeter thread. This is the first time I used this thicker thread, and I really love it. I love how it looks with this leather. It's just thick and hardy, and I think it complements it really well. They do make a 1.2 millimeter, and I'm interested in trying that out at some point, but I haven't been able to find it like through Amazon or something. I got 
just little small sample spools of some Ritza thread off Amazon, which was really nice. So I'm really satisfied with the way that this turns out. Um, I would like to use much thinner pieces. So in the future, I may see about having um, an order split down to even like one millimeter. Uh, but I don't know that I want to make something with all of these pockets again. I don't tend to use pockets normally, like not in my journaling or anything. So this was kind of a special circumstance because I have a lot of things that I want to store for finance purposes. Um, but that's kind of, oh yeah, and I'm doing so much better with my sealing of the thread. Um, I didn't scorch the leather this time and I'm, I'm getting a lot better at that. And I like how clean and smooth this is. There's no snag at all. So I'm happy about my improvement with that. And I think, I think that's it. Is that all I wanted to say about this? I am making something special for the inside of here. Um, I'm actually going to make some leather folders. So I will talk about those whenever, whenever I get those made. My hands need a big old break <laughs> after making this. So yeah, I am, I'm really, really pleased with this. I think it's fun and funky and I love being able to make something that fits what I'm looking for instead of getting something and trying to force myself into using it. So I would say if you have been thinking about making some small leather goods or making just a simple traveler's notebook for yourself, to go ahead and do it. Like just dive in, figure out what it feels like to cut leather, to punch through it, to sew it, and just enjoy the process because it is kind of one of those activities where it's like a mindless activity where I'm just so in the zone and so focused that I can't really worry about anything else. So I, I kind of needed this last night. I just wish it wasn't so hard on my hands. Um, but I just want to encourage you to, to just go ahead and, and try to make something. And you may end up surprising yourself. And if you keep doing it bit by bit, you'll find that your skills will improve so much with everything that you make. So that's it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you again soon. Bye.